Welcome to Lay of the Brand, a podcast where we sit down with the experts on the latest innovations in marketing, creative, and PR, and the way these disciplines are revolutionizing how the tech industry communicates and sells to the world. I'm your host, Jake Lynn, stepping in on behalf of Richard Sheehy. This time on Lay of the Brand, we're pleased to welcome Alan Rubin, Chief Marketing Officer of O-Rock Technologies. Alan's career spans over 25 years in B2B and B2G marketing, with more than a decade of senior leadership experience in the public sector and commercial IT channels. Prior to O-Rock Technologies, Alan served as the Vice President of Marketing at organizations like Aero Electronics, a Fortune 118 value-added IT distributor, and Imix Group, a public sector VAD that helps technology companies grow their business through the government. Alan's expertise spans multiple areas of marketing strategy and execution, including market intelligence, channel marketing, demand generation, digital marketing, and marketing operations. In 2017, Alan even earned the title of Channel Chief by the channel company at CRN. Welcome, Alan, and thank you so much for being here. Oh, thanks, Jake. It's great to be here. Well, let's just start off. Uh, What are the primary differences between business-to-government and business-to-business marketing? Well, I think there's a lot, Jake. And I I think one of the things that I have seen, um, tell you during my time at Emix Group, we worked with a lot of companies that marketed into the commercial space, and they were actually looking to grow their business in the public sector, whether that be federal, state, local. uh, And One of the major things that I saw was that a lot of companies really treat the public sector as its own vertical. Um, And the way we really looked at it was the the public sector, you have to kind of think of as, as it's a horizontal market, right? So if you are doing business in the commercial space, say in the healthcare industry or the construction industry or the aerospace industry, there are uh, analogs, there are use cases, there are um, best practices and solutions that, uh, that you can leverage in both the commercial and the public sector. So if you're selling into you know, hospitals and healthcare facilities from a commercial perspective, you should also be looking at VA hospitals, the defense, uh, the military health system, uh, you know, health and human services facilities. So there's, there's a lot of analog, so you can't really look at it as if it's just a vertical market. You have to think of it as a horizontal. Well, that's great. Could we dig a little bit deeper? Could you just give us some, a few examples of how, uh, how folks have marketed most effectively uh, within business to government? Yeah, I, I think there's a lot of differences that you have to think about, um, starting with things like the buying process and the selling cycle, right? When you're in the B2B markets, um, it's relatively straightforward to find the right buyers. You can educate them, um, work with a buying committee. You can wine and dine the right people to, to build those relationships. Um, and when you close a deal, you can get a PO cut pretty quickly. And you know, you're dealing with the people who are making the decisions and control the money. Um, in the business to government side, it takes quite a bit longer. Uh, the sales cycle can, can be quite long. Um, and you have to think about the different rules and regulations and limitations there are. Uh, the people in government are very restricted in the ways they can interact with buyer, or, so with sellers during different parts of the buying cycle. Um, they have very strict regulations uh, and compliance requirements around how you can market to them, how you can sell to them. Um, and even when you get to the buying committee and you get to the point that somebody's interested in buying from you, you have to make sure that everything is lined up from a contractual perspective, um, that the money is obligated and put into the right accounts, um, that everything is signed off by the right authorizing officials. So there's a whole lot of hoops that you have to jump through from a buying process perspective. I think there are also some other um, significant differences around the information that's available and the transparency. You know, you on the business to business side, you can find access to a lot of information. You can look at annual reports and um, you can subscribe. You know, one of the, the tools that I've used in my last couple of companies is Discover Org, database that has access to a lot of buying information. Um, in the government side, you have a lot of built-in transparency because you're dealing with taxpayer funds. So the government has obligations to share how money is being spent and what their plans are and and where those tax uh, dollars are going and, and, and really getting down to the level of what 
problems are they trying to solve? What technologies are they using? They have to report out publicly on a lot of that information. So um, from a, a go-to-market perspective, if you know where to look, there's, there's a lot of information available. Um, as it comes to specific sources, like any market, they have their own media activities, their own you know, uh, thought leaders and influencers, their own events. Uh, but there is, of course, a, a very specific set of those that uh, that government buyers will will turn to, and and I think another key thing, and I'll just touch on quickly, is that the motivations are very different, right? When you're dealing in the business to business space, uh, you're dealing with people who have a profit motivation; they have to return shareholder value. Uh, there's personal incentive for them to do very well. Um, you know, they can get promoted if they, they make the right decision, if it works out well for the company. Um, in the government, um, the mission is really all about serving the citizen and serving the taxpayer um, and doing things that don't necessarily return a profit motive. So the people who are, uh, who are, you may be dealing with from a marketing perspective have different motivations. They're not necessarily expecting that they're going to make the right decision and it's going to move them up to the next job level or they're going to get a massive raise because of it or they're going to get a commission from it. So you have to keep those things in mind and make sure your marketing messages uh, reflect that as well. That's great. Uh, you know, we're here in, in the, inside the Beltway near the Washington area, which, you know, is, is truly the monolith of, of uh, government contracting sources. If you're someone... If you're a company coming from the West Coast or something, and, and they might just be feel o so overwhelmed by the, the prospect of cracking in, would you say it's worth it? Would you say there's always more room uh, to, for business to be Oh, to be absolutely. Had? Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, I think the important thing there is you have to be prepared to make a commitment to the market. Uh, I've seen a lot of companies that try to stick their toe in the water. Uh, and try to, both from a sales and marketing perspective, and even from a product perspective sometimes. You're, you may have to make adjustments to your product or solution. Um, but you can really think of the government as Fortune One, right? The, I, I like to kind of jokingly say the government buys everything from tanks to toilet paper <laughs> and everything in between. Um, just from an IT perspective alone, you know, roughly over the last couple of years, the, the federal IT budget has, has averaged about $80 billion a year. Um, and that's just with kind of product and service sales that doesn't get into embedded technology that you may find within a tank or, a, a, you know, an airplane. Um, and that also, the state and local market is probably about a similar size. So there's always money there. Um, the government's always going to pay its bills. Um, you know that it's not going out of business or going away. Um, so it really comes down to, do you want to make a commitment to it? And are you willing to, uh, to look at it from a long-term perspective and make sure that you are uh, not expecting immediate returns? Because it does take quite a while and quite a bit of investment to get into the market. Speaking of investment, I mean, would, uh, you know, if you're a small company, you might want to take the easy route and take a, a one-size-fits-all approach, you know, as, I, don't, I hate to say copy and paste, but something along those lines, uh, where, what would you advise a company who's looking to just do a shotgun approach and literally, you know, swap out the name of the agency that they're, <laughs> that they're targeting? Yeah, I, I think it goes back to one of the things I was saying earlier, that you have to think about the government as not a monolithic customer, right? There are individual agencies that are larger than a lot of Fortune 500 companies, right? And if you're dealing with health and human services versus the Department of Transportation or the Navy, they all have very different missions, very different organizational structures, different budgets. Um, you always have to keep in mind when you're dealing with the government, there's a political undertone to everything. Leadership changes frequently. Um, so you have to you have to keep that in mind when you're thinking about your marketing mix and your marketing approach and your messaging in particular. And uh, I have seen a lot of people make the mistake of just taking their, you know, just as a, uh, a simple example, take your corporate collateral and change the fact that you're going to increase your profits to you're going to better serve the citizen. And the people in this market are used to that and they can see through that. They want to know that you have done your homework and that you understand what their pain points are. With that said, they do want to know what's going on in the commercial world. So they will look at use cases. They will look at case studies. Uh, they tend to be often very risk averse and, and somewhat conservative with a small c because they, again, they're dealing with taxpayer dollars. Um, so 
you don't always find, there's, there's exceptions, but you don't always find instances where they want to be the first one to try something. They want to see that something's worked commercially. Um, but once they see that, there's applicability. You just have to make sure you're tailoring your message to what is that individual agency or department or even program office concerned about? What is their history? What are they trying to uh, solve from a, a technology problem, if it's a technology solution? Um, and, and what's the outcome they're looking for? And make sure that you're tailoring to that. Got it. Got it. And if you're a, a company, uh, you know, startup, or you just have you have limited means for really getting your your message out, do you have some some tips or some some case studies of how a company would would crack the market that doesn't have the 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 uh, you know financial means of a Microsoft to sure. you know, to, to really um, reach the customer. Yeah, I think a lot of it goes down to targeting and focus and not trying to be everywhere. I, I've seen um, companies that come into the market and they think they can have, they can be successful with, you know, we have a DOD rep and we have a civilian rep, right? And you may be competing with companies that are, that have, you know, 40, 50 people dedicated to Air Force or, or to, you know, one specific part of the civilian market. And that's, we're, we've been talking a lot about federal. We're not even really talking about the state and local market where, you know, every state and every locality operates differently and has their own set of contracts. And they would expect that you're going to have people on the ground and local partners there. So I think it's important to build relationships in this market and not try to bite everything off at the same time. Focus in on on where you think there's the best fit for your product or your service, and make sure that you then start to get involved. Get involved in some of the industry associations. Um, the, the, a lot of agencies will have things like industry days where they will announce to industry, hey, we really want to work with you and we really want to get best in class offerings and here's the things that we're looking for and we're trying to educate industry so industry can be a better partner with us. So going to those things, um, learning about those types of opportunities and meeting people can be really important. I, I think it's important to have the right channel partners, um, if, particularly if you are trying to sell through specific government contracts. It's very difficult to get on and hold and manage all those different contracts. So it's important to have partners in the market that have both those relationships and the, con the contractual vehicles that the government customers want to use. So those are a couple of tips to think about. Great. Can you think of a, uh, some really effective channels that have worked for you or, or strategies? Yeah, I, I think coming from, um, from I've been big companies uh, marketing into the space, and you know currently I'm with a, an early stage company, and I've been in a mid-sized company, so I've seen a lot of different things work. That, one of the biggest pieces of advice that I give people is try to be integrated with your approach and try to follow kind of a, a create once and use many type of approach. Right. So, um, you know, some of the things that, that I've seen work well, and we did a lot of this in a mix group, is to host an event, um, have a panel discussion, videotape that. Uh, break that up into small chunks that you can put on YouTube, you can use on your website, use that content to create a blog series. Um, spin some of that off maybe into an authored article that you can go out to the, the, the media with. And as long as it's neutral and, and you can build some relationships there and, and share some value, yep. um, you can get a lot of mileage with those. And then, of course, using social media, using your email, your blog, your newsletter to amplify a lot of those things. So I've seen a lot of instances where uh, people have done that really successfully, and I've seen the other side of it where they kind of think about things in a one-off perspective, and then they end up spending a whole lot of time and money recreating the wheel when they've got a lot of great content to work with. And I think content is just so important uh, in, in the business-to-business -business or business-to-business -business or business-to-government marketing space, but in this space in general in, in business to government um, there's so many different products and technologies and things happening all the time that the world is changing so quickly you think about AI and cybersecurity and machine learning and right. cloud and big data and whatever the buzzword of the month is um, people are hungry for information um, when the government goes through its procurement process it often starts with a research phase where they have to go out and kind of do an agency vision, an agency need 
um, exercise. It, it's uh, part of the, what they call the federal acquisition regulation, which is what governs the purchasing process. So they have to go out and, and kind of identify their need and then do a, a formal market survey. And so having content in the market that people can access to understand when they're early in that buying cycle, what's out there, what problem am I even trying to solve, and what are some novel ways of solving it can help you get in and start to shape that requirement and, and shape where, um, where an eventual opportunity could go before somebody else has gotten in the door and done that. Yeah. It, just, it's, it sounds like through this conversation that the gap between business to business and business to government is, is shrinking or that the approach maybe is, is becoming much more similar. I think there's a lot of similarities. I think a lot of the tactics, uh, if you're successful in the business to business space, and you're willing to invest in the government side, I don't see any reason why you can't leverage a lot of the same, uh, a lot of the same tactics, a lot of the same content. It really comes down to how do you tailor it, how do you align it to what the government's needs and requirements are, and then make sure that you've got the investment, whether it's your own people, whether it's you're hiring an agency, you're hiring consultants, um, you know, doing market research in that space to make sure that your story and and the content that supports it is tailored to that market. And it's the same way you would do it, if, again, if you were looking at how do I market to financial services, to banks and institutions versus hospitals and healthcare versus you know, energy, oil and, oil and gas. Um, you, you can look at the, the market the same way from that perspective, but just keep in mind that it's, the government could encompass all of those things. Right, right, right yeah. And often does. <clears throat> um. But you say that uh, you know it's 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 just important to establish a level of thought leadership, and uh, I saw I, I know that you write often on LinkedIn. How how important is a is a, a media platform like LinkedIn? To I think it's uh, it's become increasingly important. I think um, a lot of what's happened with social media over the last couple of years, with the, the sophistication of the advertising platforms and the groups and really the ability to use those tools, if you know how to use them uh, in a way that you can develop relationships, uh, you can identify the right people, um, it can be really valuable, especially because, uh, as I mentioned, in the government space, relationships are so important. Mm -hmm. um, government tracks and publishes past performance. They will look at how you've performed on a particular contract, how you've uh, supported a particular program. Uh, a lot of the people in this market speak to each other all the time, right? It, it, particularly in places like the D.C. area. There, there's other pockets of activity around the country that are very heavy geographically. But if you look at the D.C. area, you can go, you know, you can't go three or four hours without being invited to another event, uh, you know, another rubber chicken dinner, um, uh, whatever it may be. There's always somebody out speaking. There's always overlap. And so you start to see a lot of the same people going to these things and they talk and it's a, it's a relatively small community. Um, so building those relationships, using social channels to make those connections and amplify uh, those relationships can be really important as long as you're not doing it from a, you know, purely crass, you know, salesy. salesy. I, I get so many of those on a daily basis. Really? The, the in-mails and the things that it's very clear somebody is, you know, I've shown up in somebody's search and they're just trying to sell me something and those are the ones that I ignore. And you're going to see the same thing mm -hmm. with, from the government perspective. Some very sophisticated buyers who can see through uh, very rudimentary sales tactics. Yeah, and, and I think it's important when it comes to whether you're using social media, you're creating content, um, you're doing events, doesn't matter what the format is. Uh, it, very much like the business to business space, people want something compelling. They want to be entertained. They want to be engaged. Yeah. Um, even if you're selling something that's very dry, technical, you know, how do you think about how you're using uh, humor, how you're using connection, how you're relating to a pain point or an opportunity. Maybe it's using FUD, you know, fear, uncertainty, and doubt, or you're using the upside of how much you can save on something or, or how much more streamlined, more effective something can be. Mm. Uh, when you start to look at the government, you 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 know because you're not just you're not dealing with a profitable uh, or with a profitability motive, I should say. Nobody would refer to the government as profitable, right? <laughs> right. Uh, but 
you're you're appealing to people who often have very much of a higher mission. I, we um, we had an initiative um, several years back when I was at Emix Group, where we rolled out a, a technology solution that was uh, geared towards. Um, criminal investigators who dealt with some really, really nasty things, you know, online, you know, child pornography and things like that. And, and to hear some of these guys talk and see the passion and, you know, get up and, and speak about what motivated them to go into this line of work when yeah. they could probably be off somewhere making a lot more money, um, getting a lot more notoriety, but you see tears come to people's eyes and, and it's, you see the passion and, and, you know, to the extent you don't want to be again, crass about it, you don't want to be manipulative, but if you can tap into those types of emotional connections with your relationships, with your content, um, I think that can, can really help you stand out and cut through all the noise that you see. That's great. So it's, uh, don't, don't sell uh, a bureaucrat short. It's basically, uh, you know, it sounds like they're very passionate, very smart and, and contemporary folks. They're, they're people and they consume, you know, they're, they're looking at their cell phones, they're Googling, they're watching the same television programs. They're, you know, they have their own kind of their own language in a way. It's really the government you can think of as almost operating like a foreign country in a lot of ways. It right. has its own right. language, its own culture, its own rules and regulations. Um, but they're no different than, than everybody else um, in how you would want to motivate them, reach them, connect with them. So that, that's why the, you know, the engaging, engagement levels in your content, the relevance, um, entertainment value, you have to be able to, to think through those types of, of angles and activities uh, much as you would in any other market. We've been talking mostly about the, you know, trying to penetrate the federal market. Would you say uh, that Focusing on the local and state and city market might be a good way to dip your toe in the, wa in the water, especially if you're a company in a sp particular state that might get, you know, preferential look and as a way to kind of just try out your marketing strategies. Um, yeah, um, the, the state and local market can be challenging. Um, again, lots of opportunity there. Um, it is incredibly fragmented, right? So you're dealing with 50 state houses, as I said earlier, you know, 3,000 roughly um, state, local, municipal governments that all have their own ways of doing things. Um, if you, th there are a few, you can, you know, imagine California, Texas, New York, um, Florida are, are some that have massive budgets. Um, so a lot of people tend to focus there. Um, there is preferential uh, treatment, if you will, scoring, or yeah. scoring for, yeah, are you located in the state? Mm -hmm. um, are you on a state contract, right? So what a lot of companies will do is make sure that they have channel partners mm -hmm. that are established in those states that have the right contract vehicles, that will have the right relationships. And particularly when you go down to the local level, um, you know, you may be competing against somebody who, you know, goes to the same swimming pool or their, you know, their, their kids play high school football together. Mm -hmm. Um, and so those relationships are in place. So it can be hard to kind of parachute in from the outside. With that said, there's a lot of upside from a marketing perspective because a lot of those markets are not as heavily targeted and as heavily marketed to. So sometimes they're hungrier for information. They're hungrier to go to events. They're hungrier for that kind of attention and contact. And we used to see quite a bit when we would do, you know, an event in the D.C. market and then we do the exact same event, you know, out in, uh, Colorado, say, or in Florida, the attendance rates, the show-up rates, the registrations, the engagement dramatically really? goes up because they're not getting hit with 40 or 50 of these things every week. Right. So don't overlook the local markets. Don't well. overlook it. But again, you have to be prepared to invest and you... and particularly because you're going to have to be, have a lot of face time in those markets. So you're going to have people with a lot of time on airplanes. Um, there are state and local media outlets, you know, uh, eRepublic, um, government technology. There's others. Um, some of the research firms uh, or the, the platforms like GovWin IQ and Bloomberg have state and local plays as well. So you can get access to a lot of that information. Um, it's just, again, it's a commitment you have to be prepared to make. And I'll, I'll just add one other thing. There's one of the things that I saw uh, working with a lot of commercial organizations um, at Arrow and even at Imix Group was that um, sometimes state and local business is handled as a public sector, um, uh, kind of a public sector organizational play within a, a technology company. Other times it's handled as a geographic commercial play. So the person, the, the sales team maybe that's dealing with the West Coast or the Western region may have California, Oregon, 
Washington State, um, whereas in other organizations, that's all kind of handled by the public sector sales organization and marketing organization. So that's going to differ depending on the, the, the organization and how they go to market. Great. Well, this is just a fabulous insight. Thank you, Alan. You've been listening to Lay of the Brand, brought to you by the Merit Group, a strategic communications firm that blends the best of PR, digital marketing, and creative to help our clients tell their stories. Lay of the Brand's executive producer is Melissa Chadwick. Francesca Elatrush is producer and showrunner. And our assistant producers are Brooke McClary and Jessica Chapeau. Graphic design by Haley Bumgardner, with technical support from Keith Kiska. Got a topic suggestion or want to share feedback with Lay of the Brand? We'd love to hear from you. Just subscribe to this podcast on iTunes or your preferred listening platform and leave us a review. Spread the word and tell your friends to like us as well. And to learn more about Merit Group, check out layofthebrand.com.